All right, welcome to the Bears Gym today. I hope you enjoy your time in the Bears Hall of Discipline as we study the Word of God. We are going to pick up with John 19. However, we got to roll backwards just a little bit. Apparently we had technical difficulties last time. Now we clipped off a little bit of 18, so we're going to call this John 19, but we're going to roll back just a hair here. A few verses here. So picking up in verse 38 of chapter 18, as we continue our study in the book of John. So John 18, 38. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find no fault in him at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man but Barabbas, but Barabbas was a robber. In other words, he was a robber, a thief, a murderer. A violent man that deserved the death penalty. And Pilate was going to put them side by side, thinking, oh, they'll surely want Jesus to be free, and, and therefore releasing him from his responsibility. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And they, they beat, whipped him, accosted him, slapped him, punched him. They were brutal. They brutalized him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they hit him and punched him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you know that I find no fault in him. In other words, that was kind of their way. They beat him, tortured or whipped him, trying to get him to confess, but Pilate did all that, and he said, I find no guilt in him. He, he's gone through the fire, and yet he comes back clean. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold, the man. And when the chief priests, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die because he made himself out to be the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was very much afraid because he knew Jesus was innocent. And he went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not? that I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Yep, what you're saying is true. However, that's what Jesus had to say, Thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Brutal. That's when you need to ask yourself, Am I doing the right thing here? The crowds want this, but it's the wrong thing to do. You need to question your own actions and decisions. Is it to please God or is it to please people? And from henceforth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And that probably made him fearful because in that day they didn't mess around with rebellion, coups. They didn't mess around. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat him down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew was called Galbatha. And it was the generation of the Passover time, the time of the year. It was the time frame, the yearly generational from year to year. Instituted Passover was right now. 
because this is when Jesus is going to die, because he is the ultimate Passover lamb once for all. It's done for all mankind. Jesus said it's going to be on the Passover. The Jews and priests didn't really want it on the Passover, but Jesus said it's going to be on the Passover because I am the Passover. Those that receive Jesus Christ and cling to him are going to be passed over by the angel of eternal death because they've put their hope, faith, and trust in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Passover. So it was a preparation day for the Passover. And he says to the, to the Jews, Behold your king. Pilate says, Surely I'll tell them this, and they'll want to let him go. However, they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest said, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered Pilate Jesus unto them. And they crucified him, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, or the hill, the hill of the skull. And they crucified him there with two others, one on each side. And one of these men becomes born again, becomes a Christian, becomes a follower of Jesus Christ, right on the cross, right in his moment of death. And he wasn't water baptized, but he was spiritually baptized by faith in Christ because he put his trust in Christ. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. You're gonna, we're going to go down to that beautiful paradise in the center of the earth, and we're going to spend time together, and you're going to have from that moment on into eternity, eternal life. And Pilate wrote a title, a placard, and put it on the cross that said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And the placard was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Those were the languages of that day in that region. Greek was the predominant language. And Latin was the predominant language of the world. That was kind of the known language. And the Jews knew it. And it was also written in Hebrew. So in three languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, Therefore, amongst themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment amongst them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now therefore stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, which we believe is John, the disciple, the apostle, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. He, Jesus said, I'm now giving him to be your son. He's going to take care of you, and you connect with him, because now... I'm going to make him your, your little foster child, and you're going to be his foster mother. Then said he to his disciple, whom we believe is John, Behold, John, she's your mother now. I need you to take care of her. She's now your, your stepmom, your foster mom. It's time for you to take care of her, because I'm, I'm going to be going. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there were set there a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled 
a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain on the cross, on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, in other words, it was a Sabbath, Sabbath, and then boom, boom, a Passover, Passover, and then the Sabbath. They besought, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the thieves on the cross. When they came to Jesus, they saw he was already dead, and they didn't break his legs according to prophecy. But one of the soldiers took his spear and pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith whatever he says now is true, because he saw it, and I saw it. And I'm saying these things that you might believe. So this is John speaking. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. That's why the Passover lamb, when you have a Passover meal in your home, you don't ever break the bones of the lamb, never. And it doesn't. you don't leave it for leftovers or feed it to the dog. Whatever's left, you burn in the fire. And again, another scripture said, they shall look on him whom they pierced. See? They didn't pierce the other ones. They didn't. They, they they broke their legs. But Jesus, they pierced with a spear. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave, and he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. That was quite a privilege, was it not? To take the creator of the universe, off his, the instrument of his death and put him in your own grave that you had made for yourself. That was a privilege. But what he didn't know, Jesus wasn't going to be in there very long. Three days, right? He descended into paradise with a thief on a cross next to him and one day Jesus came up and he said, I'm here. And when he ascended into heaven, many other bodies of the saints were resurrected. But that's another story. We'll talk about that another time. Anyway, it was a privilege for him to have Jesus in his own tomb for three days. That was my point. Then there came also Nicodemus, which first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh, aloes, a hundred pounds weight. Then they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher wherein was never a man laid yet. And we believe it belonged to one of these, this man here. There they laid Jesus, therefore because of the Jews, the preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Because the, the day of preparation for the Sabbath and the Passover, it was, it was happening. And, and they wanted to get this done speedily so that the time of rest could kick in. Because they were very tight on keeping the law, keeping the festivals. It was a very, very strict regiment. So now Jesus is in a sepulcher, in a tomb. And they rolled a stone in front of it, and they believed it's a done deal. It's over. But God has a plan. But the plan isn't going to happen for another three days, because the plan has to play out. There has to be a... God has a set order of, in, of principles, laws, patterns of the universe, of creation, of physics, of anatomy. And three days is a very significant thing to three days. Three people, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next time we connect in the book of John, there's going to be a, a rebirth of the situation and things are going to come to life 
But I'm going to leave that for next time. So from the book of John, chapter 19, and a few other verses with it. God bless you. And as you study the word on your own, enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed this little time together, and hopefully you gather just a little nibbit of encouragement, spiritual food, and power. Because it's not from me. It's from the Holy Spirit, by the teaching of the Word of God. God bless you, friends, and we'll see you next time.